Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. That can keep their same personas, to keep their same personas, and go from different federation to federation. You feel me? Like, what you mean? Regardless of how big they go. Go ahead. Like, yeah. like Undertaker when he came from WCW, his transition into WWF, he couldn't go as Mark Peoples. You feel me? He had to reinvent himself and go as Undertaker. Whereas Sting, when he went from um, Impact from WCW to Impact to WWF to anything, he was Sting. You feel me? And he kept the same persona once he got to that. That crow shit, and when he got to that black outfit and that, that black and white makeup, yeah, that was pretty much it for him. And he see, okay, who, whoever where you he go, you know what I mean? he go, that's that thing you get, and that's that same image and persona, like Ric Flair. When I was like, where Ric Flair went, he was styling, profiling. If him, I don't care how old, how young, NWA, yeah. WWE, WCW, even when he was Ric, ECW. You feel me? Like he was styling and profiling. You feel me? But like some people ain't got that that transition effect where you gotta change, you gotta change or come up with a new stick and you gotta be a heel like Triple H. When he came to WWF with that 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 regal shit, he won't really get that pop for that all that bowing and that all that old regal shit. Damn. But when he switched it up and he got with Shawn Michaels and he went that he that that Triple H, he really started taking off more. He had to I switch it up WWE somewhat. He don't want to talk about him, but I say another person <laughs> that was able to do that is Chris Benoit. Yeah, like he, yeah. he no matter. Like was even if, I don't care it if you him. called him the Rabbit Wolverine or Crippler Crawl. I don't give a damn what the name was. He was Chris Benoit. He was Chris Benoit, and he was a little nigga that was going diving head butt you and put you in a lock. Like he was a just he was the same person, he was persona. Like, I don't think he gets the amount of credit he deserves as far as being a groundbreaker for Federation and just being just an all-around champion that he was. He held so many championship belts. He may not have got to the level of a heavyweight championship until real, real late in his career. But a span of well, the shit he did and the factions he was part of, just just for him being in a part of, a part of the full horseman. I mean, that's, that's this still is in-ring so work. He don't get enough credit, to be honest. Oh, no. But it's no. because of his the way he ended. It mm-hmm. fucked up so much of like yeah everything else. It's almost like like Owen has almost been reduced to the way mm-hmm. he died and him hurting Stone Cold, but it's so much other shit that he was like revolutionary in, in the ring. Oh yes. That oh, yes. overshadowed because of that. But yeah. Mm-hmm. What up, Pat? What's going on to it? Right uh, to that to it. Get this like working. <laughs> We ain't here just talking wrestling. Yes, I hear y'all already got into it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, man. Talk about this good shit, man. I'm excited for this competition. This this conversation. Yeah, y'all. It should yeah, be yeah. a slobber knocker, as JR was saying. You feel me? You feel me? <laughs> just, okay, commentators. Oh, <laughs> top commentator. Who, who, who you got top commentator? <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, you know who I really like? I used to like um Michael P. A. Hayes. Okay. Him and Bobby okay. the Brain Heenan are like okay. two dudes are like they didn't have like super long runs, so a lot of people don't really associate them with the mm-hmm. announcing position, but they did so much other shit. But like as announcers, like they were really good, yo. I fuck with Gorilla Monsoon. Mm. Just cause, okay. just because of the voice and the knowledge he had when he talked about shit, he had a voice and a knowledge, yo. Like he just had that command. Of voice. Prestige. Mm-hmm. Exactly, for me, his voice just made you listen to him. And I'm gonna just give it to Jim Ross, man, because after all this shit, Jim Ross been through hell for us. He still right. commentated. I tried with not to go for the, for the default. Like Jim Ross is like the commentator. Like when <laughs> he's, he's the commentator guy. Right? <laughs> the first voice you hear in your head is, "Oh my God." <laughs> He He's killed the him. God. He's the commentator God. Now, I'm going to give it to a wrestler that turned commentator to Booker T. I got to give it to Booker T just because I hear <laughs> Booker T. Yeah, is the part of so wrestling commentator. Era, I had kind of phased out and I had stopped watching wrestling consistently, so I didn't really catch Booker T. If you, you watch he still do it from shit, time right? to time. You watch that Shannon Sharp shit, right? Oh, yes, we Yeah. 
Booker T is a Shannon Sharp of wrestling commentator. Well, I do watch his podcast, so I can imagine kind of, but mm-hmm. I can't see him being his animated self and doing it. So I'd have to see that. But yeah. I, yeah. I can yeah. I can see where he would be a good talker. Like he, he's a good promo period. Period. So now, man, most Mine's of Jim I say Ross. Most okay, yeah, who else? Mine's Jim, mine's Jim Ross, Lawler, and Booker T. I was Lawler. going Lawler too. Puppies. I was going Lawler too. Yes. I was going Lawler. Lawlers too. But you know what? Lawler. Only Lawler during the attitude era. Yeah. Like that four year run from like 96 to 2000 when he was at his most vulgar. Like when they when they didn't have the handcuffs on him, when they were just letting him be this country dude from Tennessee that was just talking shit. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna take one further. It, it fit. Only, it fit wrestling was so Ross. well. Like that's what professional wrestling is. Just country folk talking shit. <laughs> only Lawler when he with Jim Ross. That's only Lawler I fuck with when he with Jim Ross. Mm-hmm. I like them. Too. Lawler, they had a very good dynamic. Mm-hmm. When Lawler with anybody else, he kind of like it feels like he carries everybody else. Exactly. Yeah. I only yeah. Yeah. do Jim Michael. Ross holds Michael home. somebody. It was another Michael, dude, Michael somebody. Michael Cole. Michael Cole. Cole. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really fuck with Michael Cole, man. He was like, he was, he, he was he like, tried uh, too hard to be a. He. he was I a, don't he, like when commentators try to be personalities unless you are already a wrestler or somebody who was like exactly. somebody, and you come I, like if you just a commentator, sit your ass there and commentate. Put be, if you just a commentator, be a Tony Schiavone. Don't do nothing but commentate. Boom. Boom. That's all like, you do. Don't give me like no you. outside of the shit where you trying to get up and get in people's face and talk. Like, sit your ass down. Tony like Schiavone was a Nick straight Nick. cut, dude. I like Michael Cole now because he he played the, the good guy person now. Like, he, okay. he's defending the, the baby faces now. So he don't be all up in your, your, your face all the time. He's just explaining the storyline in the background. Oh, okay. good. Okay. He done faded the back. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, he's still like the main voice right now because he got the tenure pretty mm. much. And it's like a lot of young new guys, like this Corey Graves dude or whatever. But um he right now he just like he's pretty much the narrator, man. Going through or whatever. So damn much. He stopped it all up in the video. All up in the video. <laughs> Dancing, asking all the stupid questions and shit, trying to get on the promo. Shit. Um, who was the ball head dude from the eighties? Man, he passed away too. I forgot. Mean Gene. Uh, yeah, Mean Gene. Mean Gene. That was my. Mean dude. Gene wasn't a commentator, but he was the best announcer ever. Like his yeah, his announcer, interviews, announcer, his like, interview like, skills, interview. and his ability to let wrestlers just go. He and, was um, really good. I put yeah, it like this. Ran off or when they fucked up. Mean Gene has such a persona that they put this nigga on the cartoon. That yeah, is that's true. real. That's real. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Call the hotline. Who was the ref that always had like Stone Cold's back all the time? It was the old dude. I think he's still ref right now, man. But it's like a. It's it was a, he, he, got, he got a twin. Yeah, Earl, Earl Hebner, he the one that screws uh, uh, the screws. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's uh, two of them. It's a, he got a twin. It's Earl Hebner and Dave Hebner. Yeah, uh, one working in the back room. Work, work, work. They both used to be referees with that one working in the back. Mm-hmm. So y'all already said y'all uh, moves and stuff that y'all like? No, we ain't oh, get into no. the actual conversation. We were just talking What's wrestling in general, bro. Oh yeah, oh, okay. niggas, you, you know niggas just wrestling heads. Like, that yeah, shit, I, I, that I, sports, I, I, or music, or like, Shit like that, like random shit. Like I can go on shit like that. That's my childhood. Oh, oh yeah, video would. games I, and shit. Wrestling. I can go. I don't I watch too. I ain't too big on wrestling now. But I like I stopped wrestling, watching wrestling. I said it was five, six years ago, just because I didn't like the way it was going. And the people they were bringing out just the storylines. Mm-hmm. I couldn't follow the storyline, so I stopped watching it. And then I just rather like I was like, you already know when it comes to the video game. I was like, fuck wrestling, watching it. I'll create my own shit. You feel me? Because I got the I got the game and create the own universe I want to and just watch that shit and play that out. Just let it let the computer run on that shit. And I can just be like, okay, this the WWE universe I created. I can watch this shit, put whoever I want in and take it up. You feel me? 
So I used what, to hate the motherfucking characters you made, man. <laughs> Fuck Rick Haverty. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> that nigga. And Barry Blackheart. And, and the whole Blackhearts. And Bubba Black or whatever the hell Blackheart you made up that day. Fuck you Rick Haverty, y'all. Uh, the angel and devil. Oh, oh that shit. Guy. They're making that nigga blue. Just that big boot nigga would. Oh, blue and green. <laughs> <laughs> Green had the Green had the running shoulder tackle. Nigga, tackle the fuck out your ass. That that's part of like where I got the idea for the topic today or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, WrestleMania is two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. And I was just thinking, you know, if I was to create myself as a wrestler, just like we used to in the game, what would be my main moves that I would so let's get back into this wrestling conversation man let's do that shit mm. um so <laughs> um so you want to start with dream matchups or top five moves what you want to do what, where you want to go with it <laughs> i think so. well i got i got my top five ready if y'all ready moves um, are doing oh yeah i'm i'm, I'm with I, I've been, I've been, I've been writing and writing since you said that shit. I've been, I got, I, I kept going. I, I couldn't. I stop. got some honorary mentions also. So if y'all got honorary honorary mentions, feel free to put those out. But oh, these are my I favorite moves. Honorary. Let's go. These are my favorite moves. Um, I want to start off with the choke slam from hell. Nothing says, nothing says, hey, I run this ring like grabbing somebody by the neck. Picking them up above you and slamming them right back, back the fuck down on the mat. Nothing says period. Like boom, like choke slam nail, whatever. Um, the next okay. one is a little bit left field. Um, her Karan. I don't know what it is, but it's something about the dude just flipping, then using his feet to slam somebody down, spin them around leave them all disoriented or whatever is always the move you never expect out the blue because they always pull that out of nowhere one of my favorite moves whether they do it a different way each time each person so but each time it looks kind of black submission move cripple across face now that i know that's the move we not allowed to actually say but that that bitch was effective (laughs) in real life and on wrestling Mm -hmm. my next move is the RKO because that shit is effective anywhere at any time just period matter of fact I would probably say that is probably my I would say is the most effective move out of my list and but my favorite move is the Stone Cold Stunner because it just has so many so many classic memories to that it's like it's one of those moves even if you don't want to do the moves your stone cold was always in a situation where like the the optimal situation like i want my boss just fired me you'd be pissed off and that's every reason why you would want to do your particular finishing move on the boss that fired you you know what i'm saying now my honorary mentions um sharpshooter one of my favorite ones. Okay. Whatever. The super kick. Okay. Or sweet chin music. Okay, yeah. Be specific. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sweet chin music. Um the clothesline from hell, depending on the person that's doing it. Because that uh that one time JBL did that clothesline from hell, man. That I still remember that hit from this. I forgot who he did it on, but man, that dude flip. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um spine buster and okay. i think the, one of the most effective moves in wrestling is german suplex depending on the person that does it okay i i, I that's a pretty solid list there um mm-hmm. i guess uh i can i have two honorable mentions Mm-hmm. Well, I, my last five were honorable mentions anyway. So you All right, cool, cool. All right. So my honorable mentions is uh, they're honorable no world. mentions, not because they're not deadly and because I don't like them, because <laughs> not seen very much. 
Um, the mm-hmm. first honorable mention is when Lex Luger first came back to WWE after he had that motorcycle accident and he was not doing the torture rack, he was doing the steel plate uh, forearm smash where he was mm. just knocking niggas the hell out with his forearm. Uh, <laughs> it's still the, one of the best moves in a wrestling game. Like they had, a, uh, it was, I think it was, was it SummerSlam or was it Superstars or something? But he had this movie, he'll throw you to the rope and he'll just like forearm the fuck out of you and just, he just flexed oh, you. Yeah. It, it yeah. was like the, it was like one of the few finishes on that game that like if you hit it, I don't care who was playing. Like if you hit that move, it was over. So I really like that. Um, but he didn't do it for that long, I guess, just because I guess the, the gimmick wore off. But when it when he was doing that in WWE, he it, 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 he sold the fuck out of he was knocking the fuck out of Nick. Um, I got a question. I got a question. Did you do that? Did you do that that move to like face? At one time, because he made that on the video game. Yeah, on the video game, when we used to play the uh, game on uh, Super Nintendo, I used to beat him with that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paul, God damn, Paul. I ain't beat him with nothing. Um, I used to win the matches with that move using that finisher. Um, but yeah, I digress. Oh, man. His, his face changed <laughs> all the way. To- <laughs> uh, and then my other one, because you only see it maybe like six times, is the Emerald Flosion. By uh, what was it, Murasawa or something like that? Mirawa, mm-hmm. uh, the Japanese dude. He was this Japanese dude, but he would like, he only broke it out like, like he would do like all of these other finishers. But if he broke that out, it was like a special match, and mm-hmm. it's like that. It's like got a hundred percent kill rate. Like nobody's ever kicked out of it when he's done it. So like other people have like tried to move over the years since then, you know, because nowadays everybody do every finisher like it's a regular transition move, but. When he used to hit that shit, it was over. But yeah, so those are my two honorable mentions. Now into my top five. Okay, um, number five. This move would not hurt in real life, but in the world of wrestling, it is one of the most deadly finishes ever. And it has one of the highest uh, like kill rates. The People's Elbow. My favorite wrestler <laughs> of all time is The Rock. So, yeah. <laughs> like, rightfully so. But that motherfucker throw that goddamn uh, elbow pad and get the point in which away. Hey, man, that shit used to give me hype as fuck. That shit used to have me ready to run across my room and bounce off my bunk bed. The elbow drop the floor. Like, it just gave me hype. So, to yeah, uh, the people's elbow. To this day. Five. Um, okay. Number four. Um, I say this, I'm saying it, I'm calling it the gore. But I really mean anybody that do the spear as a finisher, I just like the spear. Like, it's one of the few moves in wrestling that, like, if you do that move in real life, you fuck somebody up in real life, too. Like, it don't matter how that move goes. There's no safe way to do it. It's just you getting shoulder tackled the fuck out of full speed with no pain. And you eating that shit to your rib. So, like, that shit hypes me up as just a person that likes like contact and likes like aggressive shit and just like Goldberg. Like I like that that the the hand to hand like hey man this ain't nothing but my pure will and just force that's fucking you up. Wow and and it just come out of nowhere because like the person is always getting up groggy and turning around into it. Like they're never just like faced up and ready like come Mm -hmm. on you come on give it it's like, no, it's like, hey, did, 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 bah, oh, fuck. So, like, I just, yeah, Spears at number four. Um, mm-hmm. Number three. Um, it's a tie between the two people who've done it the best. My favorite, personally, is the uh, Rob that Van Damme version, the five-star, but... The uh, Eddie Guerrero version is beautiful as well, but the Frog Splash by either one of them two, just them two people's oh. Frog Splash. Like, they're like, it's like poetry in motion is perfect. They got full extension. It's like a full pump. Like, it, it's if you conceive what a Frog Splash should look like, they do it to perfection. And I think their perfection mm-hmm. puts it at number three. <clears throat> yeah. And poetry uh, in motion a move too. That's a hard mm-hmm. move, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Poetry emotion is a move. 
Um, number two for me, um, and this is another move that in real life, if you do it to somebody, it hurts for real. Uh, the even flow DDT, the specific variation that Raven does. It's the oh. prettiest DDT in, in like, from such from a wrestler that a lot of people kind of underrate and kind of look at as like a slacker. The like, motherfucker nigga. Jake the Snake already had done the perfect DDT. And then Raven came along and perfected that. Like the even flow DDT is DDT perfected. Like I don't care who else does it, it's not gonna be that. So just stop. Don't do it, don't do that. Do something else. Um, but the even flow DDT is at number two for me. <clears throat> Um, and then for me, number one, for its kill rate, for its iconic status, for what it meant to this person and to wrestling and to the fact that like, it really became synonymous with this person. Like a lot of wrestling moves and finishers are kind of interchangeable with a lot of wrestlers. Like a lot of people do DDTs, a lot of people do frog splashes, a lot of people do elbow drops, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of people might do a power driver, but ain't nobody done the power driver like the tombstone power driver. For a power driver, which is one of the most dangerous moves to pull off in wrestling because it, it has the highest like accident rate. Like so many people has had a career shifted or ended off of a botched power driver. That shit bad. Undertaker's man. tombstone <clears throat> power driver. You knew it was over when you saw him do it. As soon as he hit you with this, it, it it's synonymous with that character. You don't really see anybody else doing it. The only other person was his brother, Kane. <laughs> Kane stopped doing it after a while and just went back to his choke slamming days. Like, it's it, it's just, it has the longest standing run of just like devastation. And for one of the most dangerous moves, the person pulling it off has one of the highest safety rates with said move. Like you don't hear anybody saying that they got fucked up from a tombstone from Undertaker. Mm -hmm. And he's done it who knows how many hundreds of thousands of times between road shows and, and and actual tape is like it's a science now. It is, it it is just one of those moves, man. So yeah, number one for me is the the, the. that okay. makes that makes sense. That makes sense it. that Undertaker uh, will will have the highest success rate because that's his one of his moves that he he's sold on. So he got to protect that. Mm. So oh, <clears> not to more honorable mention. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yeah. The curb stomp. I don't oh care. yeah, I love that shit. Like oh. I, I'm, I'm with some fucked up, like and insult the injury, like it, some street fight shit. Like we fighting outside for real. I love that move. Like just come up, stomp your shit into the ground, bitch. <clears throat> Fuck you. Shit, bitch, I and if it's off the top rope, even better. God damn it. I, I hope it all falls the fuck off when I stomp it through this match. Got dang um, yes, Randy Orton's punt kick. That Randy too. Orton's I put punt that kick. in the same category. Like, yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. And then, now, um, let's get into this. Now, I'm uber specific with mine. I'm very specific. Um, honorable mention, we're going to start off the last ride, Undertaker. Mm. The move that um, everybody hated. Mm, last ride. Everybody hated to take that move. I, I can I can believe it. I can believe it. <laughs> now, um, next runner up <clears throat> on the Rick Rude neckbreaker. Oh, just add insult to injury. I'm I'm just gonna spin my hips, and then I'm gonna do this move on you. Just I'm gonna insult you before I injure you. So, <laughs> um, I'm gonna go next next runner up. Detest big boot. Okay, that was the yo. Yo. Tess was that dude. May he rest in peace. Because then he passed. I, I don't even know. I, I got it as a tie between him and the bro kick for like the two most <clears throat> different looking ones as far as like how mm -hmm. big that shit look. But Tess probably as far as like full extension, like in the way. Yep. Out of any damn word, nigga. <laughs> With a PS leg. <laughs> yo, the one he did on K-Quick. Yeah. 
damn, to this day, 20 years, 20 odd years later, yo, I still remember that sound. And me and, I think me and Face was on the phone with like, it was like probably one of them, like, it was like probably like 10 folk on the phone. But I just remember like, <clears throat> Face, you heard that shit? God damn. Like, I yeah. thought that nigga was dead. Oh God. For those who don't know. And I knew, I knew wrestling was fake, but I thought that nigga was dead as a donut. For those who don't know, K Quick is now called R Truth. Yes. <laughs> that nigga's for a new name, champ. Fuck your game. I kicked you further down the alphabet. But yeah, yet uh <sighs> test passed um in two thousand nine and um <laughs> over <laughs> oxycodone overdose. Some damn pills. Okay, now let's get into my, my 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 top. I can't even say top five because I'm gonna go over five, but it's my top. Now <clears throat> I'm going the Arn Anderson version of the spine buster. Mm. Oh, he has the perfect spine buster. Yes. Yes. Oh God. Yes. Like, you would, I, I don't know that he started to move. I doubt that he was the first person to ever mm-hmm. do it. But like, he perfected that motherfucker. He does it better. He's like the even flow DDT. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, hell yeah. This. Now I'm gonna go the Paul Orndorff power driver. Okay. Pretty beautiful Paul Orndorff. Mm-hmm, just classical. Mm-hmm. Now it's a tie between these two individuals that do the same move, but I'm gonna go the moon salt by Kurt Angle and the moon salt by the great Muda. Oh, mm. Muda does a beautiful moonsault. Like it, it's all moonsault. Like, period. <clears throat> like he pauses in air when he's doing the back. Mm-hmm. Like it's like a yes, a float. Yes, like you know what? His moonsault is similar to like a backward swan tom. It's like mm-hmm. it's like you almost think he's coming straight down, and then he flips it over. Like it's beautiful. Oh man, that's a good mm-hmm. damn. I forgot all about that one. Now That's I'm gonna go wrong. just to throw it in there. I'm gonna go book a T and then spin a Rooney. Let's go. I knew you were gonna say Hold that. on the spin a Rooney. That's not a finish, I'm, though. That's a that's like that's a, a I'm gimmick. Just, I'm just gonna throw it in there. Just just gonna throw I a book knew it. Spin a Rooney. Yeah, I knew you were gonna say it. I knew you were gonna be the one. Yeah. Now let's really back to something serious. We're gonna go to DDT. <laughs> Well, we're gonna go two individuals only with the DDT. Now, many people do it, but only two individuals do it to me perfectly. We're gonna go Jake the Snake, but we're gonna come right behind him with Arn Anderson once again, man. That Arn Anderson DDT won't shit to play with. He's sneaking the ring, come behind you, you talking Rick Flair, snap your ass around DDT, he out the ring is over. <laughs> now. I can roll with you. You know what? Since y'all said like moves that like won't work in real life, I got one honorable mention or whatever. Mm -hmm. Even though the guy that's doing it, it might actually work for him, but old school. By the Undertaker. When he walk on the ropes for no reason, but show and put him his arm down. If you don't get your ass down. Get your ass up in the room. And I, the now, whole time I be thinking, like, why did they my do number that? one, my number one <clears throat> finishing move is the Sid Vicious Power Bomb. Ooh, his variation was like it, it, it was something, some added flair at the end. Some it, he when he did it, 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 it looked like it was intentional to hurt you. It meant to look like Man, it was hurt. He hurt a few people for real. Yeah, he heard Shawn Michaels with that shit. No, <laughs> uh, true. <laughs> like, but but them my t- them, them my moves right there. But let's get into top five matchups, man. Let's really get into this shit. And I'll go first. I would love to go first on this one. Now, I, I, I did like I, like we said earlier. We're talking about if you're gonna make a matchup, people gotta be in a prime, man. It can't be no old version. Get somebody just now, and that ain't gonna work. Because of course, the older version they ass whipped. Um, but we going my number one, my my first match. I'm say is going to go Bret Hart in his prime versus Sting in his prime in an Iron Man match. Hmm. Now that would be dope. That would be dope. 
sharpshooter versus Scorpion Devil. Like everybody always wanted to see that too. Yeah. And I'm talking Surfer Boy Sting. That that era. You feel the way he was on his new wave. Yes, that that thing. Now coming up right behind that one, I want to see Brock Lesnar and Sid Vicious in a no disqualification match. Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of Sid Vicious. Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of a lot of people. Brock <laughs> the dog shit out of Sid Vicious. Oh my God, that shit would get ugly. Now, oh, oh. next one. In a ladder match, I want to see the Prime Steiner Brothers, Prime Steiner Brothers against Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Ladder match. Steiner Lines. Big oh, Papa Paul. <laughs> no, I got the Steiner Brothers because back in there, early, like when they were real, mm. time, they used to come out them wrestling uh, leotards and shit. Like them niggas was hard. Mm-hmm. Like them niggas, now, were like, and they were so cohesive. Mm. Like they was a, a real tag team, tag team back when tag team meant something like that. Exactly, they had all the titles. Thank yeah. you. At one point, they held the NWA, WCW, and the IGP titles all at the same they, time. They yeah, they, they want no, they want no bullshit. They were the tag, they were the tag team to fuck with WCW. They, they, they were that wow. epitome of greatness at one point in time. Now, I'm going to go just just because I would love to see this one person get get, get tortured in a match. I'm going to go Cactus Jack against Hulk Hogan in his prime in a Texas trap match. Wait, which one did you want to get tortured? Hulk Hogan. Okay. He deserves it. Oh, yeah. I've never liked Hulk Hogan. Oh, in your dream, all you're going to hear is, oh, that doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Off on that shit, creative, creative control, brother. You know, mm-hmm. that, doesn't mm-hmm. that doesn't work for me, brother. Mm-hmm. I can't yeah. see that match. Now, another match I would love to see is the Four Horsemen. And the Four Horsemen version I'm talking about is Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Chris Benoit, and Barry Windham against DX. The DX version I'm talking about is Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Road Dog, and Whatever his partner was, Bart Gunn, when he ever changed his name into Billy Gunn. And the, yeah. And into a, and, and either a Hell in a Cell match or a Survivor Series type match. Be I, believe, I believe the four horsemen to pull it out. I believe because I just believe they're going to pull that one out. Now, I had a, a dream tag team match. I got a couple of matches, but I'm going to let y'all go to my dream tag team matches, undertaking his prime and tagging with Sting in his prime against Lex Luger and Shawn Michaels. Mm. Well, it's funny that you said undertaking in your last one, because my first one is that. Um, so these are my five, and I, they don't really go in no order. They just kind of my five. Um, so my first match is Undertaker in his prime, like in his prime dark madness against Sting in his first iteration of the Crow Sting. Mm. Um, I just feel like just the entrances alone would give like me chills and just I feel like that like they both are really good wrestlers at big events. So like I feel like the match itself would like live up to the hype and be like epic. Um, and I'd be just interested to see with the storyline that they would go into to build up to the actual match. I feel like, I feel like for me, like wrestling was always about like the storytelling. Like I like the moves for sure, but like the storytelling behind it, like the the build ups to it, like it won't about Papa Shango and Ultimate Warrior as much as it was about the fact that Ultimate mm-hmm. Warrior was throwing up this weird shit because of Papa Shango. Like I want to see what the fuck go like. Get your get back, nigga. Like it, it's the build ups to these shits that like make it, you know, important to me. You know what I mean? So like, I feel like they'll do some cool with it, and they both just great storytellers in and outside the ring. So yeah, that um, my next one would be Kid Dynamite versus Chris Benoit in the Battle of the Flying Hair, but um, kind of one of the originators or at least one of the perfectors of it against the person who kind of took the torch in the new newer era. Um, plus they both were like undersized scrappy dudes that were strong as shit but could really wrestle their ass off so I feel I know they're on a great show like they could wrestle 
a stick figure and make a, a a fucking classic. So like them two together, I know it would be like crazy. Um, my next one. Prime Shawn Michaels against Prime Kenny Omega. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, I, mm-hmm. Like before Shawn got <clears throat> fucked up with injury so bad, like when he was able to really like go go and sell and fly. Mm-hmm. Like I just the, the way them two sell and tell stories in the ring with their bodies and their face looks pretty, like that shit would be fucking epic. Um. I don't even care who would win. I just know, like, the lead up to it, the promos would be crazy, and the match itself would just be fucking awesome. Um, I would also like to see Prime Stone Cold. I'm talking about, like, first year of 316. Oh, it's a 316. He was at his most bad ass of the 316. He was just wilding the fuck out. Um... I would like to see him in a no DQ match against Prime Sandman in the battle. Mm. I was in the battle of like who's gonna get the drunkest and beat the shit out of each other with the craziest shit and like talk the most shit. Like I don't, oh, man. Do, I don't need think no like promo, it. no lead up. Like this could be a surprise match at SummerSlam somewhere. Like just drop the intros and let these niggas fucking rock. Like. Mm-hmm. Pure testosterone and me and two niggas beating the fuck out of each other for a good 30, 40 minutes, and I'm gonna love every second of it. Um, and then my last one. Ooh, this is tough. Um, I I don't I hope I'm saying his name right. The dude that Kenny Omega fought like four or five times, uh Kobayashi. They had like mm-hmm. six star matches. Is his name Kobayashi? Kobe. Uh-huh. Kobe. Uh, yeah, it's some with a K, ain't it? Uh, I don't know his, name, so I've seen sure. his matches. I've seen at least 20 of his matches, and he's like in my top 10. But I want to see him versus a prime Sabu. Um, Sabu, Sabu go away. I don't care Sabu what kind of match. Biased. Um, but I don't want it to be no disqualification. I want to give Sabu some type of limitation, and I want him to actually follow. But I want to see like, him to just wrestle. Like I really like Sabu as a wrestler. Like when he's not doing the craziest shit, mm-hmm. I really like him as a fucking wrestler. So I think that'll be dope. And then my honorable mention, um, I never got to see it when it was happening. But uh, was a nigga named Hakushi. He used to spit the Hakushi. shit in his face, and he used to do the uh. He used to come out with, and he used to have uh, tattoos all over his body. Yeah. I know you're talking oh, about. Oh, Tajiri? No, nigga. No, it's true. 90s, he had on the white outfit. I do remember the dude that had Akishi. tattoos all over his body. Akishi or some shit like that. I know you're talking about. He came in all white. He had the tattoos all over his body. I'm um, Chinese writing shit. Oh, yeah. That was a template on the game, too. Mm-hmm. His name was Kenzuki Shinzaki. Jensei Shinzaki. Um, he went by... Oh, hold up. Yeah, it was Hakushi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Hakushi. So, uh, him versus the Great Muda. Mm-hmm. I just want to see him. And, like, and, and it's like uh, mm-hmm. no DQ so they can spit in each other's face and all that shit. I just want to see what colors they choose and like like they had such similar like move sets. I feel like I was more of a power and Muda was a little bit more of a, like a speech, but like I feel like they would be a really good style class. I, I, Ooh, I, think that would be I a got an honorable game. mention for your ass. Why? Now that you mentioned that match, honorable mention, um, finishing move, the great Muda, that brain buzzer he used to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a mean brain buzzer. Like he was really dropping your ass on the head. Mm. He ain't even had to do the moon song. He got that right. Boom. Boom. That shit used to sound like that. Like, it didn't even sound like the rest of the moves on the mat. It was just like, boom. Like, you could tell that, oh, no, your neck is. That nigga just stacked your quarters, champ. Real nervous. Mm-hmm. What you got, Pat? What you got, Pat? <clears throat> I kind of, a lot of them is like just matches I would love to see again, pretty much. Okay. But. 
Um, just throwing this out there. I would love to see a tag team Royal Rumble match or like a tag team all brawl Royal Rumble match. Like I saw something like that not too more, long ago mm. or whatever when and then they had to face off with like Riddle and, and Randy Orton. But I would love to see that with like just the prime like these the classic tag team from back in the day mm. and the good ones from now the current good ones or whatever, all in one big one, one big Royal Rumble or whatever, team after team, you know what I'm saying? And especially with the Dudley boys in there. Mm. The Dudley, like the Dudley boys gotta be like, a, like a, no no one even know that they came out. Like one of them <laughs> last minute jumps or whatever. Mm. The Dudley, what a, you know what I'm saying? Like I need, oh, yeah. I need them to come out like that. And the same thing with like with the Hardy boys or something like that. I think that would just be classic, pretty much. Um, I want to see a WrestleMania match with Shawn Michaels versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Kick for kick. Mm -hmm. I just want to see that. Because I know Shawn, he's going to bring the spectacle because he missed the WrestleMania. And if y'all ever seen Shinsuke Nakamura and his interests when he come out in those big events... Yo, it's just it's a spectacle, yo. Like, and I just think he dope pretty much him. Him or maybe Chris Jericho or somebody like uh AJ Styles. Well, I've seen AJ Styles since just gave Nakamura fight a couple of times and them shits was great pretty much. But that one. Um you said one of mine that Stone Cold versus Sandman. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, just just trying to match wrestlers with wrestlers that that it would fit pretty much. So <clears throat> my next one is Stone Cold Attitude Era versus Steve Austin when he was in WCW. <laughs> I wanted to see those fight off. It's like a mm. Mortal Kombat. Yes, yeah, stunning. Stunning versus the stunning Steve wow. Stunning Steve yeah. Just for sh- yeah, shits and giggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just for shits and giggles. Because I just feel like the old Steve Austin is going to want to fight that guy and beat the shit out of him anyway. <laughs> Seeing him. Anyway. Um, I want to see Undertaker versus Goldberg, even though I'm, I've seen that happen. But it wasn't that... It wasn't big like it should be. And I want to finally see an Undertaker versus Sting. It was supposed to happen. It never happened. Hmm. Why it never happened? Brock Lesnar, which brings up my other matches. Anybody with Brock Lesnar involved in a WrestleMania match. You could literally put Brock Lesnar with anybody in WrestleMania. It's going to be a good match because all you want to be like is are they going to survive? Ooh. <laughs> Yo, speaking of WrestleMania, WrestleMania dream match. They both come mm-hmm. back to WWE. Daniel Bryan versus CM Punk. I got to see that. That. Uh, that would be dope. Them two yeah. together, together is going to be an epic fucking That, that would be dope. That's a lot of <clears throat> high level wrestling in the ring at one time. Um. And speaking of when you said going back to, I wanted to ask y'all, what is your favorite match of all time? Like your one match that like you go back to and you can have one honorable mention and then your favorite, but try to keep it at two. That I'm gonna make that difficult. Mm-hmm. Shit. Why y'all thinking my honorable mention is uh Hell in the Cell, Undertaker versus Mankind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was classic. <laughs> oh, oh, the other dream matches I wanted was like the Shield versus the Bullet Club. I just wanted to see that. Bullet Club would beat the shit out the Shield. I just want to see. You know they calling in about twenty extra niggas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be a whole lot of this, shit, buddy. Whole lot. Or of the Wyatts. Or the Wyatts versus. Mm-hmm. Bullet Club. Or the Wyatts versus Shield again. One of them. I, I just like. I, I, I would go. I will go to Wyatts versus Doom. Mm. Mm. Ron Simmons and Butch Reed. I'm taking it back, but that'll be a good matchup. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, I yeah, would have to. My top match, just to get it out of the way, is Shawn Michaels versus Ric Flair in the retirement match. Um, oh, I remember. Yeah, it's a lot of feelings out of history. Match. Not like storyline device or nothing, but like the actual match. Mm-hmm. All right, man. John called me a bitch. Mm-hmm. Tear hit the corner of my eye. But then the Rick was like, and super kicked the fuck out of him. Like, so at that moment, I really thought Ric Flair was done. And I hadn't watched wrestling in a minute. And that storyline had drawn me back that year. So like actually catching and watching some episodes. So like I was kind of invested in it. So like I don't know that match, but that match to this day, like the wrestling itself, the the eras kind of clashing of like mm-hmm. the mentor, the mentee, the the stakes at hand, the two niggas that just can sell the fuck out of any match, period. Like they just you talking about two dudes that literally any match they in is gonna be damn near classic like it's hard to have a bad match with them so two of them them two together was just it was just dope but y'all got the floor I apologize um I'm gonna say man I can't pin it down to just one match it's like sagas of matches so I'm gonna go I'm gonna say my honorable mention is any match with between Sting and Ric Flair and they heyday when they was battling any match they was in is my number is my run <clears> up <throat> Um, number one, shit. shit mm-hmm. Number one match, I'm going to have to say Steiner Brothers versus Nasty Boys. Mm. Because yeah, I prefer I prefer tag team wrestling because it takes it takes more to work as a tag team than to do solo. Because you got to and the matches are the you matches are usually match. longer. Mm-hmm. Matches are longer. You see a little bit more. It takes teamwork, you know, and when you have that certain chemistry and teamwork, mm-hmm. different moves flow. You feel me? So I mean, those two tag teams, as far as how one was so technical and one was so rash and, and just raw. When they and they was in each other in WCW and they heyday and they was in, in each other, any match they went against each other, Nasty Boy Stein and Brothers, man, number one. I could watch any of their matches and just be entertained. That ain't a bad uh, list there. Pat, did you say yours yet? I don't think you did. Oh, uh, uh, nah, I would say all my favorite matches is any match when it's like. Stone Cold versus The Rock because they will always do each other's moves and it was entertaining <laughs> me. They will always just do each other's moves, just piss each other off. So I like that or The Rock or Triple H because it's always a build up to it like who, who's going to get their revenge? Who's going to get their revenge? Or, or any match where Undertaker and Kane is in a tag team with another person or whatever. Like it's always like Undertaker Kane and Stone Cold or Undertaker Kane, The Rock, or somebody like that. Whatever. Three man tag. Any 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 match where I'm gonna see all my favorite moves being done <laughs> at once, whatever. But oh. I, I will Go I will say my favorite WrestleMania moments is when it's like the last match of the night or whatever. And it is also one of the ones that pissed me off too at the same time. But it's the last match in the night night, and then it gets all rowdy. Then all the wrestlers come back from the back. It's a big ass brawl or whatever. And then Stone Cold comes out the back and just starts stunning everybody until they get on the ground or whatever. Or at the end of the match, it's just or the one when they end the night with is a big brawl at the end, but you never get to see it. The the end of it, they just cut it off right there, and then the next USA show come on. They used to piss me off. This shit used to piss me off. Like, what the fuck happened? Burn notice come on some shit. Yeah, yeah, yo, know, that don't used to piss me off, man. Uh, <laughs> Would you say best storyline? Your favorite wrestling storyline. 
Uh, I know for me it's uh the original NWO forming. Uh, cause I remember, for me it's like nostalgia because I remember sitting on the phone uh with Face like watching that shit live and like it was the first thing in wrestling like we was always like kind of smart to a lot of the shit that was happening so like you know we read dirt sheets and shit so we'd be like oh that nigga you was just in Japan no. but like that was the first shit the way the way it was a weird time because like WWE was like at that time they was recording like a show. And then another one would be live. So it was like kind of a weird, like, mm. where you were still like, like you couldn't really tell when niggas was hopping because it was happening so fast. So it was like, is this shit real, yo? Mm -hmm. You're showing up, like, hold up. Like, this niggas, <laughs> like niggas ain't really get hit. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, it's a work <laughs> until we saw on WWE and they rolled out the, like the fake diesel and the fake, all right, all right, all right. Some corporate shit. These niggas really is <laughs> okay. But like before that, like niggas really couldn't tell, like if like the dirt sheets wasn't even really sure. Like, are these niggas still on the contract? I like what, what's happening here? And it was right after they had done that billionaire Ted shit. So it was like, okay, it's kind of realistic. Like these niggas just going rogue. Like, what is what's happening here? Then Hulk Hogan flipped, and it was just like, what, well, who else gonna flip? Like, is everybody in NWO? What's happening? Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, that whole first year, it was a whole lot of, like, it was the first year in wrestling for a long time for, like, old school fans who had, like, kind of gotten used to the normal rigmarole, was, like, able to predict matches like shit. Like, up, 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 story beat, story beat, got you. Okay, yup, you about to do this. Okay, that's gonna be a twist in it. But, like, that was the first shit in a minute that was, like, <laughs> I don't know if this fake or real no more. Like when they threw that nigga Ray Mysterio into that side of that shit, that shit looked real as fuck. <laughs> like that lawn dart shit was apropos. <laughs> I, I was very surprised that nigga ain't sticking that shit like on the cartoon. Like, boy, ain't. like it was a lot of shit going on that just looked like Oh shit, these niggas is fighting for real, yo. Like this shit about to get raw. Fuck the show. Ain't no pun intended. These niggas is really fighting. I think that's my favorite like storyline, like from start to finish. Like, cause I it's the only one that I like before the end of it, I wasn't able to figure out. Oh, I know what you about to hit me with. Oh, here come the twist. Oh, I know it. Like it was like, oh no. Face you know? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. These niggas tripping. Oh, I guess I'm going to have to watch this one. You see what happens. There you go. Shit. Me, I'm going to have to say er, any early Undertaker storyline when he still had the, the mystique of the dead man. You feel me? Like mm -hmm. the, that early mystique of all the lights go out. This nigga was walking. He had the real pale makeup before he started getting all the tattoos and shit. You know, basket with his hand locked in it. Mm hmm Yeah, I think that was when I really thought, I was like, I don't know, this nigga dead, but he damn sure. <laughs> <'cause>, uh, <laughs> I know you feel that fucking casket, though. I don't give a fuck who you is. Don't give a you feel that shit locked, and I see the way you dragging it. it it's oh. heavy as a bitch for real. So even <laughs> if it's like a hundred pounds, oh. that's you just carrying that shit. Like, yes. All right. He had that mystique. He had a certain that. Oh my! Oh, niggas didn't know what was gonna happen. You didn't know what he was gonna do for me. And he had Paul Bear. Matter of fact, that was I'm gonna say before even he had Paul Bear when he had that the black uh, man. Mm hmm. You feel me? Like so back the then, had power over him. He was just dead. Mm hmm. Just a dead man <laughs> from Death Valley. <laughs> That's all you knew. Back, back That's then, it. <clears throat> if it's a, and my runner up, my runner up, I'm gonna go WCW. Mm. I'm gonna go any four horsemen storyline. Cause I'm guaranteed to see Arnold Anderson put somebody in that goddamn spine buster. <laughs> 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 Shit. 
<laughs> Guaranteed. That was, that was a go-to sneak move. Hit you in the nuts, Damn. turn around, spine buster. Hit you in the nut, turn around, spine buster. <laughs> ding dong, ding dong. And I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna take it with. What's y'all favorite tag team, man? Of all times, pick get pick one. Get an honorable mention, but you gotta get that one tag team. Oh, I got you. Road Warrior. Call him by mm. Like mm. I straight up tell you, like in the ring, they was fucking dominant, and in a street fight, I'd take them too. I ain't talking about no LOD 2000 or no how the shit was <laughs> right, and no, no puke and all. No, I'm talking about the real Legion of Doom. Clothesline you the fuck off at the top of your shoulders, and we getting the fuck up out of here. We coming in, we ain't selling shit. We beating you the fuck up, and we going home. And we gonna yell at you. Oh, what a rush! Okay. And we get okay. the fuck up. Like them niggas was hard. Like that, they they was great as a tag team. They had what you want from like the more wrestler, like high flyer and hard. And then mm-hmm. you animal come in and just give you the brute force. They finish a move was like one of the top is in the top three of all time tag team finisher moves. Um and they were believable as fuck. And they gimmick, like they gimmick was out of this world. Like, I don't know no kid that grew up in like 80s or 90s that watched wrestling that didn't want a, a pair of spiked shoulder pads like them niggas. Like, <laughs> one time, like even if it was for like a weekend, you wanted you wanted them shit. Gotta have you just tell them on glass ground. Like, it was just what you. It was just like them them shits. Like they had everything you would want. They mm-hmm. were the old niggas because they was for real. And they was showing the pants and them shit. And then they appealed yeah. because well, of their gimmick. <laughs> like, yeah. Any honorable I, mention? Uh, if I had to give an honorable mention. Damn, tag team. There's so many great ones, bro. Um, if I had to give an honorable mention, though, I'd say, man, Edge and Christian, yo, they underrated as a team. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. They put in a lot of pain, and, and they revolutionized a lot of shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, well, you know what? I ain't even mentioned my my favorite storyline, but I don't really oh, have one. Every, any revenge, I'm a sucker for a revenge story. So anytime they fucked up Stone Cold, he came back, and next thing you know, you see somebody walking down the hall, he grabs them from the top of the the, uh, the, the ceiling and stuff, and fuzz them up and drop them, or, or anytime they mess with Kane Wong, I'm, I'm a sucker for a revenge story. I love revenge stories, but my favorite... My favorite uh, tag team is, I would have to say, is the Dudley Boys because I'm going to see something violent. I'm going to see something hilarious. I'm going to see somebody crash through a table at least once. At least once. They do not disappoint. Good tag team wrestlers, too. Like, they're they, just... Like, oh, they're period. Yeah, the chemistry. Timing and teamwork, like... Yeah, it's like perfected over the years, man. Right? Yeah, yeah. I like I like tag teams where it just it seems like it's all one motion. Like the whole match, it just seems like it's all one motion. They had it up, you know. They just setting everything up in in general or whatever. Don't really care too much for the like you know the tag teams that just seem like they put them together because it looked like a cool tag team. Yeah. Pretty much. But uh, I will say, if I was to pick one of them, I kind of like when Edge and Randy Orton was a tag team. Just because it just seemed like, well, Edge is, Edge is, is the, he wrote the book in tag team, like you said, too. So, so, and then you put Randy Orton at the right time. Hey, Randy boom. Is like the most. He's he's literally like actually if you want to be on it, Randy wasn't the perfect wrestler when it comes to professional wrestling. Like from promo to ab- abilities in the ring, can do literally any type of style of match. Um, can play a heel or a good guy. Mm. Like he, all he missing is like motivation to like actually want to do it. Like he he really just mm-hmm. kinda, he he a typical like I'm just 
good. So, you know, I do it. <laughs> well, you like third generation, ain't he? Second yeah. or third? Yeah. Yeah, but like he he that motherfucker. That's a that's a wrestling nigga, man. Oh, you know what? I got another dream match. Okay. Randy Randy and, and Brock. Because I don't think I've seen that yet. I don't think I see Randy and Brock. I think, I think and, they have a... And I think if they built that up, it would be it would be a big match. It would be a real big match. For real. Like, I but I think that happened. I think that I'm happen. pretty sure I'm pretty sure it would probably happen in the past, but I would like to see that again. And if <laughs> yeah. I probably look it up later. But not I see my uh, tag team. Hey, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go honorable mention. It's a tie between tag team between the fabulous fabulous Freebirds and Arn Arn Anderson and his brother Ole Anderson when they were together. Ole, mm-hmm. Ole, yeah, Arn and Ole, Arn and Ole Anderson, man, they was the fucking good ass tag team. That's my honorable mention them too. Now number one tag team of all times. Uh, Mm. Fuck it, I'm gonna go Steiner Brothers, man. Like I, I fuck with the Steiner Brothers hard, man. Like ain't shit, won't shit like um, Scott Steiner doing that hard come right off the top rope, man. One of the won't shit like one. Like, like, like decorated like a motherfucker. A motherfucker did they thing. Every, every every federation they went to, they was good everywhere they went. You feel me? Like they won't went somewhere they was good, then fell off. Man, them niggas was beast. In real life, in wrestling, and then like exactly, they just was really good wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed to have a good match with them. Collegiate wrestlers. Them and the Road Warriors wrestlers. and some of the most epic tag team matches ever. Oh yes, oh yes. Damn right. You know what's you know what's some uh, epic tag team matches though? I, I would say Edge and Christian versus the Hardys because they had a legit mm-hmm. beef. And oh yeah, that was a good each match. time yeah, like it was a good, it was a good match. Yo, know? like Hardy's, I would say they probably are one of my my favorite tag teams just off of nostalgia reasons and reasons. And really, I would say I got into wrestling. I don't know. I think I got back into wrestling when my brother, my younger brother, started getting back into wrestling or whatever. So that attitude era age is probably like. The main yeah. where I get the, my most m- memorable moments from, pretty much. But I don't see. I'm gonna end it with this one. What is your favorite promo of all time? Oh shit! <laughs> and I wonder if it's gonna be the same as that. No. <laughs> 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 That is my favorite. <laughs> oh my god. Um that one. Um, I'ma tell you, but like real talk, my favorite promo, if we talking like actual factual, is a uh, Dusty Rose hard time. Oh, oh yeah, you definitely is that is your favorite. <laughs> hard times, hard, hard times, time, baby. The hard time you put the road through hard times, baby. <laughs> God, that's my shit right there, boy. That's the road got that hard times, baby. Where shit? He would try to switch it. it. He took food. I'm gonna out switch of it up. House. See, I'm gonna switch it up because I I hate this person. I hate this person, but. I love the promos they did only with Mean Gene because of how they said his name. In the Hulk Hogan and Mean Gene Oakland promo session. Mean Gene, brother. Mean Gene, brother. Mean Gene. Mean Gene. <laughs> he said this nigga name like five times. Oh. He's with the bro. Like, what's up, five man? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mean Gene, brother. Mean Gene, brother. <laughs> 